Tormenting prices and lost life savings confirm many that the blockchain dream was too good to be true. And it may now struggle to hit past highs. Hello, my name is Shobia Clinton. This is Counting the Cost on COTV, your weekly look at world's business and economics. On today's weekly roundup, we are going to look at crypto has crashed. Can it bounce back? Even if you don't live and breathe cryptocurrency, we have probably noticed some turmoil in the sector. Eye-catching headlines about missing apes and collapsing stable coins are indicative of the chaos. How did crypto market unravel? Like so many things, gradually then all at once, take Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency, which is responsible for the third of the value of the sector. The cost of single Bitcoin has been dropping slowly since the end of March. A long-sized border malaise in the technology sector. That makes sense. An investment in the Bitcoin is one regard a bet on the possibility of further technology upheaval. Just like purchase of any other tech stock, with rise in the inflation choking off post-pandemic growth on both sides of Atlantic, the whole sector began dropping. And then in early May, the dam broke. In a week, it dropped further than it had in the preceding month. The immediate cause was contingent from the catastrophic failure of another cryptocurrency project called Terra, which was once valued at more than 50 billion US dollars and ended the week effectively worthless. As Terra collapsed, so did the other cryptocurrencies. First, similar projects saw their values tumble. As the investors feared they would follow, then the panic gripped the border sector. And then, comparatively, blue chip tokens, including Bitcoin itself, tumbled. It took until mid May for the crash to stop. But while market has regained some stability, it shows no sign of returning to anywhere near its highs of last month. Was the decline related to the turmoil in a regular economy? Probably. Tech stock in general have crushed in recent months, with high inflation undercutting the appeal of high growth, low profit investment, and a series of punishing revaluations from the largest company raising fundamental question about the limits to their potential expansion. Bitcoin fans may promote an image of their currency as a sort of digital gold with limited supply that makes it function as an effective edge against inflation. On top of that, the crypto economy sees disproportionately driven by the retail investors who treat the sector like halfway house between conventional day trading and straightforward gambling. As rising costs bite, those investors may force to liquidate some of their holdings, pushing the sector even further into red. What happened to Terra to make it crumble? Terra was a project to make stablecoin, a cryptocurrency token that was fixed value, typically one US dollar. Stablecoins are nothing new. Two of the most popular in the sector are called Tether and USDC. They function as effectively as banks. People hand their money and they receive stable coins in return, which can be at any point cashed for money again. This reserve back model has issues specifically. You have to trust the company behind the stable coins to keep the money safe and easily accessible and not to put it all on red in Las Vegas in attempt to make a quick profit with other people's cash. Who are the winners and the losers? At one level, the answer is simple. Winners are the people who sold their cryptocurrency holding in early April. The losers are the people who bought it from them. It's common enough occurrence in the sector. There is even a rallying crying for the ones who left standing with the music stops. HODL, hold on for the dear life. An implicit promise that the boom times will come around again. And only those who don't panic and sell at the bottom will make a profit in the next phase of the cycle. Does this mean the underlying technology is flawed too? Everything in the cryptocurrency sector relies on few shared innovation, chiefly the concept of a blockchain, a decentralized ledger that tracks ownership of digital assets without handing control of the network to any one individual or organization. Other common aspects include proof of work, a way of securing a blockchain by requiring huge amounts of energy to be burned every second in order to economically dissuade attackers from trying to break the system. And the use of cryptographic wallets, enabling the assets to be held in a way that prevents any transaction without the secret key of the account holder. Will crypto crash have any ramification for conventional financial institutions? Thankfully, it currently looks unlikely. 
Conventional financial institutions have largely kept clear of crypto sector and when they have touched it, have treated it as an appropriately high risk investment opportunity. Even if the entire sector disappeared overnight, the avenues of contagion would be limited. Could cryptocurrencies bounce back? The cryptocurrency sector has survived catastrophic crashes before. That's what sparked the latest conversation about us entering the crypto winter. Yes, it's bad, but winter comes before spring. The hope is that the investors just need to sit this one out and wait for the market to tower. Until I see you on another episode, signing off, me Shobhya Clinton.